All right. Next one is 2696. Oh, I actually have to look up its name because they removed most of its uh, nickname. They just put the mansion on the video. But it, it has a, a much longer nickname. So give me a moment. Uh, so it'll be right here. Generation 3. 2696. The Haunted Victorian Mansion of Dark Peak. They just put the mansion. <laughs> That's all they put. But its nickname is the Haunted Victorian Mansion of Dark Peak. That reminds me of some weird old soap drama name. Why did it get rid of this? Alright, there we go. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch in this. Most of it's probably not going to be put in the video. <laughs> well, it's better to look just in case. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember the one that we said they probably won't include and then they totally included all of it? Yeah. I mean, they did it inaccurately, but... Yeah, and they also, I think they also connected a story... That I'm probably going to read during this SCP story stuff. That's kind of the, the story in the article. Oh. Yeah. To clean out at night. Yeah. So I'm actually going to favor it. So I don't forget it. Which is kind of cool. You connect the story to the actual article. Very nice. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> SCP-2... Item SCP-2696, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. A one kilometer square exclusion zone has been established around SCP-2696 under the cover of the site of special scientific interest. Civilian access is to be restricted due to its containment procedures requiring the use of classified paranormal technology. Access to 2696 and its documentation is to be restricted to members of the Experimental Containment Research Group, MTF Theta 77, who you gonna call, and personnel of clearance level 42696. Did they make a Ghostbuster reference? Yes. <laughs> That's fine, but they didn't make a the actual Ghostbusters lore has had people of all races and genders mm -hmm. and all, etc, etc. Yeah. Additional containment procedures. Esoteric containment of SCP-2696-1 revolves around reinforcing the existing thematic properties of 2696 with a total of 256 MKV automated a threat a theoretic field modifiers units modifying from stock Prometheus Labs technology in particular electromagnetic interference and signal projection systems sourced from project number 5570 Elect electrical exorcist and I'm going to look at that Get yeah. oh yeah and requisite uh, memory sister based neural net software developed and abandoned project Number 5525 Auto Magus. If needed, AAFM units can be supplemented by additional esoteric containment workings supplied by NTF Theta 77, though it is recommended that additional workings adhere to the pre existing schema of etheric field densities within 2696 in order to maximize containment capacity and reduce thematic load of. On each individual working. I expect radiation levels inside and around 2696 must be constantly monitored for deviations. The current monitoring systems as of July 1988 consist of a grid of type VI etheric resonance indicators, each space no more than 20 meters apart. Should expect radiation levels exceed a level of one uh, kilocaspers 
within 2696 or its immediate perimeter, all personnel are to be evacuated from the exclusion zone, and MTF Theta 77 is to be placed on high alert. Personnel must not remain inside 2696 for more than one hour. All personnel assigned to 2696 must don a minimum of Class 3 Spectral Protection Ward at all times while within the exclusion zone. Okay, before I I go uh say do anything, I always thought Prometheus Labs was just a video game thing in SCPs for the longest time. But like as of late, I know it's like an actual thing in SCP lore. You you didn't before? No, I didn't. Mainly because I didn't really see it pop up in the articles. Mainly in Video games. <laughs> well, I guess you just need to find the right one. Yeah, of course, nowadays, since I read SCPs on a daily, I know. <laughs> yeah, SCP-2696 is a, is a mansion located in the region of Dark Peak in Derby, Derbyshire, England. The interior of S uh, 2696 typically includes mild claustrophobia and panic in individuals within one hour of entry. Prolonged exposure leads to an intensification of such feelings resulting in severe crippling paranoia within three to six hours. Additionally, the nursing in the tower of 2696 are subject to an anomalous effect which, which prevents all matter from entering or exiting the boundaries of either area this effect does not extend to electromagnetic or aspect radiation. 2696 contains one or more incorporeal entities that are capable of inducing mind-altering effects at close range. As such as they are to be avoided where possible and kept contained inside 2696. SCP-2696-1 Oh, they actually gave a picture of them. scp 2696-1 is a translucent, intangible humanoid apparition physically resembling the late Clara Roseth, though it has been known to assume various non-humanoid forms during periods of high activity. Previous in incarnations have included multiple younger versions of Clara Roseth, an animated mass of decaying plumeria blossoms, and a motile column of bone and biological tissue. Dash 1 permanently remains inside the tower of 2696 when inactive, but will attempt to escape from the boundaries of 2696 if its containment is not strictly enforced. Physical proximity to 2696-1 induces psychological effects ranging from mild visual and auditory hallucinations to amnesia, catalepsy, and in most severe cases, complete dissociation of identity. Such effects normally dissipate following the treatment of Class B amnestics, though a resurgence of symptoms has been known to occur. Dash 1 is not a, a purely spectral phenomenon. Etheric resonance imaging of Dash 1 showed that it exhibits as aspect radiation of an order of magnitude higher than conventional ectoplasmic entities, approaching levels of up to 3 kilocaspers in intensity. Dash 1 instead appears to be a thematic construct bound to a self-sustaining etheric monopole constantly generating alien vital energy, particles from an unknown source. How this has been achieved without the, the monopole instantly decaying is theorized to be due to a low etheric flux density within 2696 Stabilizing the monopole by constantly draining off its excess EVE particles. Consequently, Dash 1 exhibits much higher levels of aspect radiation and greater amplification of its mind altering effects the further it is from the center of 2696, as well as greater instability. Should Dash 1 completely exit 2696, it is likely to undergo a rapid expansion of its area of effect followed by a violent decay of its etheric monopole and subsequent release of massive amounts of backlash. 
suspend theories to result in mass hallucinations and small to medium scale reality shifts within a 600 kilometer radius and irreversible ego death in all sentient individuals within a 200 kilometer radius. Oh, look, they gave an example of, of SCP 2696 2A. So they actually. Okay, so we actually can look back and see if they actually did it right. SCP 2696 2, SCP 2696 2A, and 2B designates the skeletal remains of Miles and Edgar, Edgar Roseth, respectively, located inside a nursery of 2696. Due to the. I guess now. Huh? I guess that's Plumeria's now. Ah. Uh. Well, Plumeria's are... Some of the things that they symbolize is new life and marriage, which is why I was confused. They belong to ghosts. But I think I get it now. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Due to the inaccessibility of the nursery, the two instances of 269... 96-2 have only been documented via etheric resonance imaging and x-ray imaging of nursery interior. 2A and 2B are normally inert with the two entities lying in a fetal position at the center of the room. The two entities only animate during periods of high dash 1 activity. During such periods, 2A and 2B have been observed to alternate between wrestling with each other, dancing in circles, and standing motionless at the door to the nursery. Enhanced imagery, uh, I mean, enhanced imaging of the two entities reveal the presence of a carved symbol on the forehead of each instance's skulls. Notes recovered from the study suggest a relation between the symbol and the various experiments conducted by Henry Percival Roseth. In particular, those concerning manifestation and Manipulation of thought-based constructs. Is there a symbol? Oh yeah, I can barely see it, but it's right there. Right between eye sockets. Oh, that's kind of cool. It is. But also, this is a surprisingly dark SCP. Yeah. Alright. Schema in history of SCP-2696. 2696 was formerly known as Roseth Hall, built in 1869 by the esoteric industrialist and occultist Henry Percival Roseth. This is actually kind of interesting. Usually, they don't reveal much history and stuff about, about the anomaly. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It comprises of two stories and an elevated tower constructed in a traditional neo-gothic architectural style. Its interior... Interior, however, features numerous unorthodox designs, design elements such as sloped floors, dead end hallways, protruding surfaces, and uneven twisting corner angles. It is worth noting that the unique internal structure of 2696 was not an original feature of the building following the death of his wife, Clara Roseth, in the January of 1873. Henry Roseth would begin the first of series of modifications to the mansion centering on the library and the tower. Notes recovered from Roseth's study suggest that he intended the two spaces to become a combined shrine of converged spiritual energy. Modeled after similar structures found in northern Chinese monasteries, an extensive blueprints attest to an elongated bell-shaped chamber lined with complex three-dimensional reliefs, Measuring almost 10 meters tall and designed with mathematically calculated precision. Wait, I just realized, since they're telling the history of this, they're going to do their own history of the anomaly. Oh, no. When they have the history. Well, we'll, we'll find out what they do. Let, mm. Let's... Yeah. When, when his two children, Edgar and Miles, died in the August of the, that same year, the already... And Centric Roseth became even more so. In 1874, he commenced the remodeling of the other rooms of the house. According to the testimony of his former staff, Rose, uh, uh, Rose obsessively insisted that the construction of the modifications adhere to his own exact specifications. 
and often spent his days supervising the work himself. His nights were spent in solitude in the tower or the second floor nursery, from which his employees often claimed to have witnessed strange noises and lights. The materials requested to be used for construction grew increasingly specific and bizarre. One receipt list an order for 200 kil kilograms of ground up stone from the Isles of Mangalesi in Wales, and 37 meters of pipes made from a fragile mercury copper amalgam. Right. Work on the internal modifications ceased in June of 1876 when our main workmen refused to continue in fear arose increasingly disturbed behavior and numerous unexplained phenomena witnessed within Roth's Hall. Roth prominently dismissed the remained, remainder of his staff except his, outkeep, his, hike, his outkeeper and spent the following two months attempting to finish the construction work by himself. He would later perish in his own home as testified by a group of investigators from the Royal Foundation for the secure containment of the paranormal. Who, who were investigating rumors of spectral phenomena in Roast Hall. R Roast was known among mid-19th century occultists for his investigation of Eastern mystic practices, most notably Chinese Feng Shui. His theories that the modifications to 2696 are based on similar principles of redirecting the flow of EVE particles, resulting in 2696 anomalous effects. In particular, the, the etheric field within 2696 is modulated via materials of alternating EVE particle permeability, arrange, arranged in specific patterns, and formations seemingly designed to attract native, uh, negative Hui. Or Chi. Oh, Chi. Why did I say Kui? I don't know why I said Kui. <laughs> <laughs> Which corresponds in modern humaturgical uh, terms in no. to huh? What was oh, that? Yeah, I see what you were saying. Oh, I sorry, mm. my dyslexia hit me when you read that. And it's fine. Anyways, uh, terms to inducing a region of extremely low. Aetheric flux density capable of disrupting human cognition. Subsequently, displaced EVE particle flow is cha channeled into islands of high aetheric flux density, surrounded by areas of low aetheric flux density. This results in nodes of high thermothergic potential difference that greatly amplifies the efficiency of thematic workings placed within at the cost of. 2696 being induced into a constant state of unstable equilibrium. When 2696 was initially acquired, the nodes were already occupied by workings carved into the masonry, apparently designed to weaken and contain 2-1. The unstable nature of 2696 demands that these workings be left untouched. Then what's this? Oh, that's the agenda is this. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought I had to hit this. My bad. No, anyway. no. Yeah. Yeah. Addendum 2696-01. Excerpts from the diary of Henry Percival Rosa. Recovered from inside SCP-2696. Mm-mm. <clears throat> They are buried clearer on the fourth of, on one of the dreadful winter mornings, for the f when the frost strips off everything like a veil, and the last owls have yet to echo away in the terror of the dawn. Even now, in the dim safety of my study, her voice still rings in my mind. As I speak, I cannot help but hear the, her echoes lingering at the edge of my words. Her memory is still fresh in my mouth. The children are asleep now, but I think that I will fear to hear their voices too when they wake. A correspondent from Laracolor writes to me about his work on the mind-made body. His 
schema is clumsy and efficient, but it sets me thinking. Thought given power becomes form, but thoughts are trans transcendent, fleeting, merely actions and words yet to be. They decompose the labor rat. Memory, however, is altogether different. I recall the work of Epigathos and his idea of savings. But what was once forgotten is still retained, encoded, engraved, if you will, on the norms of the mind. And so I asked, what is a memory but a thought cast in stone? I don't like where that's heading. Self-experimentation has not been forthcoming. So much remains of her, yet nothing comes forth in practice. Ink and needle proves insufficient. My forehead stings. The remainder of the page is covered with a complex geometrical diagrams partially smudged with blood. The Eastern mystic traditions of positioning the and energy flow are of great assistance. Sacrifice and equivalent exchange mean nothing when a, when a working can draw from the flow of the very air itself. Though my attempts still end in failure, the tower's, tower's auspicious energies are strong and must preserve for her stake and mine. The children still speak in her voice. I fear I may be going mad. Hold on. Oh shit. I did not mean to do that. What'd you do? Um, it went to a whole different thing. A whole different big ass document. Yes, addendum 2696-3. You need to click dash 2 to read it. Yeah, that's so too. Yeah. I yeah, clicked dash two. Yeah, might as well go there. The following document is the written testimony of Jatinder Jash Hanker, an occultist under an employee of Royal Foundation for the Secure Containment of Paranormal, detailing the initial discovery and description of SCP 2696 in 1876. It plays a little note. note. That the party arrived at Rosat Hall in more than ideal circumstances, considering the start and the events we were to witness within. It was the 15th of September, and the three of us, the American medium, Dr. Amos Barton, his wife, Ariel Delacross, herself in a cultist well regarded in her home country, and myself, convened at the Wanderer's Inn. At around two o'clock, wherein we waited at the arrival of our scheduled transport. The Foundation had seen it fit to arrange for us a spacious broadcam for us a sign of hostility to, to my foreign entourage, I cannot say, this, which was sufficient to accommodate the three of us without any trouble. The road there was pleasant, and Miss Barton remarked enthusiastically among the beauty and serenity of the Derbyshire countryside. Dr. Barton merely nodded in agreement, half lost in thought, and murmured instead of, that the view of the Alps from the Via Bulga would set anyone in the right wits to tears. This change upon viewing of Thor's Hall, up, up on the moor it loomed, seeming to tower over us in spite of its distance. As we approached, I had a vague impression of one invalid for a persuasive gloom. Such was a vision that the house impressed upon me on first sight. I cannot begin to describe the source of that emotion, but I suspect it stemmed out of a singular way that its architecture stood out from the surrounding landscape. Like the silhouette of some obscene crown or a horned beast, was Spartan recalling a study did by one Dr. B. Lee in Philadelphia attributed to it to the unnatural magnetism of the place to, due to the way the marsh accumulated and stagnated the earthly energy within the house of 
large bodies of still water that would do. Dr. Burton scoffed and claimed that it was merely the work of ghosts. You know, this court's been cutting you off so much, but I'm glad I can just read it. God damn it. So you, you got basically where I was at? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Regardless of our senses, sense of reporting, we dismounted from the crowd with our baggage and we equipped and approached the front of the house. Up close, it reared upon its foundations in full. The testable glory. Its design was conventional, almost con unconventional, so its proportions seemed to bulge out in odd directions that can inexplicably at right angles. Giving one sense that the house was escaping from its very roots, beginning from the inside out, the knocker on the door was of a curious design, seeming almost as if an afterthought or a felon. An oriental beast, perhaps a lion or a boar, its fearsome teeth gripping onto a smooth stone ring, bracing itself Pressing myself, I pulled the ring back and knocked. After a period of time, during which we heard a heavy dumped shoveling from within, and the sound of slamming doors, the great door opened, and we were greeted by the woman whom we presumed to be our sole remaining housekeeper. I remembered that as we entered the house, there stood before us an enormous black door, about twice as wide as I was tall, that was as secured with the heavy iron lock. Eventually, the housekeeper ushered us into what must surely have been, must have been a parlor, but eventually had been modified at the last minute into a dining room. A makeshift buffet stood against the wall, where a valiant attempt had been made to keep it flushed with it and the uneven sideboard. In the middle of the room, a thick cloth had been draped over several square tables to form the impression of a proper diner's reception, aided by a spread of old, old silver, no doubt taken out and polished just for the, this occasion alone. Someone tilted, I am not sure if it was the American or the French woman. We waited at great length, during which much was alluded to, but not directly commented aloud. Miss Spartan spoke about the dreadful interior and rapsexual conditions of our dinner. I, being acquainted with our host, sought daylight to defend him, citing the unfortunate circumstances of his wife and children. I explained to her that grief was a terrible thing to bear alone, especially for a man such as Ross who had long been used to his own peculiar solitary silences, silences and tempers. Dr. Burton concurred with my assessment, adding gruffly that Ross was already an absolute crap of a man when he got to know him back at Oxford, and it was not unlike those kinds of people who tend to make strange alterations to the house and collect, and collect his mysterious ritual experiments on the deaths of their immediate family members. No more was to be said about the, to that. However, when the pile done in the shadow of a man promptly arrived at the door, looking by all means like his age a hundred years in a day, it took me and Dr. Burton several seconds to understand in that, in fact, this was none other than our host and old acquaintance himself. Henry Percival Ross. Ross. How he managed to transform himself into the seat, I could only guess, but one look at his face and I saw that he bore the same eyes as other men I had seen in various places during my travels. On the ruins of a temple in the jungle of Belez, a blood soaked prison in Liverpool, in the middle of a blazing pentagram in Aberdeen. Other broken men who, in a fit of Favor, devotion of or grief, that perhaps performed the unthinkable or witnessed the unknown, and it had cost them dearly so. He greeted us with a great deal more, more lucidity than his appearance suggested. 
no other small amount of suspicion that the Royal Foundation had sent us the spy on his private files. Dr. Burton, in return, coldly assured Ross that we were pres present in an entirely social capacity, and reminded him of his acquaintance with me and Mr. Miss Burton during the dreadful Cardrith affair of, of Sunday too. Ross turned his gaze to me and wondered that men like myself were not ones so carefree as to be sent on mere social visits by the Royal Foundation. His eyes met mine and I drew a breath involuntarily. His response did nothing to assuage the already uneasy atmosphere inside the dining room. But nevertheless, Miss Burton and I did our best to maintain the air of civility. As Dr. Burton continued to brood at, the, at his end of the table, and his impeccable air of frigid invisibility towards our host, after dinner we retired to the neighboring drawing room, where we talked at length of politics in the elections and the weather. By unspoken agreement, it seemed that the topic of the Royal Foundation and matters of our profession were not brushed upon at all. Throughout the night, Ross remained for the most part taciturn, in spite of our respective inquiries as to his health and mental well-being, which we took to be a worrying sign. Eventually, as the fireplace chilled, so did it, the conversation, and Ross bade us good night. Today, I, as I pen this chronicle in the warm light of the Royal Foundation study, I find it Royally, it could seemable that Ross could not have seen the events of that night. I remember that he left the room with a certain kind of gravitas, as an actor who would have departed from the stage or two just before the Pharisees. Our purpose of visit was painfully clear, yet he invited us with open, albeit grudging arms. Neither did he he do anything to prevent our eventual discovery of his affairs, nor did he dissuade us from trying, trying with his tempting, mysterious demeanor, which stimulated to conceal multitudes. I now believe that Ross Lillifer at the dining table that evening was not intended to be that of one who eats cigarettes, that one who eats cigarettes. Rather, they were the actions of a man who wants to now to be found. The housekeeper led us to our rooms, which appeared to be similarly refurbished quarters situated a few rooms before the dining room. This unorthodox placement of accommodations further stoked our curiosity, as we realized that in the course of our ability for that conversation, Ross had not mentioned nor given Nari a hint of the interior of his house at all. A foot lay behind the locked black door. We currently agreed to investigate this at the late hour. I slept uneasily and dreamed of mad things, of mazes that twisted into themselves, yet contained but one single umbergoon path, a fearsome tigers that sprung from doorways which in history, and of a singular wonderful voice, singing again and again of things long past, in whose repetition I discerned infinity. With a start I awoke and found that I had drenched myself in a cold sweat, it was 2.30 in the morning. At that, at that moment, moment, there began a soft tapping at my door, a crack of duck, a kind of flame, and a spiritual voice, a spiritual face of Miss Spartan peeked in. She whispered to me that it was time to go. We had but one candle between the three of us, which cast its mercury light along the walls as we made our way to the entrance hall, which where we had seen the back door, Dr. Martin approached the first warily and found to our surprise that the heavy lock had been removed. The door swung open on horrible hinges, with a single push, Miss Martin and I scrolled to hold it before it hit the wall. We elected to leave it open as we proceeded through the, through the unusually long virtual into the room with them. But the way that is inside defies description, but I will try nonetheless. Beyond the black door was madness, a corner led to many small cloister spaces, each at strange angles to each other. Were chosen stretched from the walls, and a medley of strange materials, at the glance I saw green soapstone, crystal marble, and jagged 
inside of a shield of in dark obsidian. The ceiling was dizzyingly high, and in the places of the floor rose to meet an, an enormous spiked sphere. sphere. The color of bone, half foreign stairs that led to nowhere, how eyes that twisted in doors that met each other were sideways. At some point, Miss Burton Marcus nodded to her husband, husband, who produced a pair of drowsy rods and led the way towards the source of spiritual disturbance. My vision blurred, and I began to see shadows within the shadows. In an instinctive act of self-preservation, I invoked the names of God under my neck, under my breath. I glanced at the buttons showed that they too were similarly under God. We located the stairs, the real ones, this time, and ascended them as the floor reeled away behind us. The dousing rods sw swiveled widely as we reached the second floor. At that point, I saw that my breath had fogged up my spectacles, and I shivered, suddenly aware that we were surrounded by an immense chill. My reaction was not due to the cold, for I had long been accustomed to the London winters at this point in my career. Rather, many a spiritual manifestation have been known to feed off the energy latent in the air. Inadvertently or not, dropping it by no one more than a handful of degrees, and, it, and the fact that it was near freezing inside the hut of Ross Hall indicated to me that this was no ordinary problem we were called to solve. We were in the process of navigating our way through the convoluted hallway when it, when it struck. At first, Dr. Barton's rod sparked, then blew out in a flash. The candle went out, suddenly I found myself gripped by an immense nausea. And as I reeled, I saw two glowing points of light in the distance. Or were they, or were they close? Miss Barton dropped to her knees, and a ward gleaming madly in each hand. There was a smell of burnt paper. Then the entity descended onto us in its full turn frame glory. It was as if I plunged over the edge of, of a great precipice, stretching before me and expectantly all around us was the fastest of memory. No, a single individual. It was clearly aware of the childhood, years, a courtship, love, death, and birth. Our memories are, are faint, but the infinite Subdivision of it into the slices of the individual's perception, such as that each moment it can be seen in more than three different ways at two different times, produces an illusion of experience akin to infinity. From this, I was able to ascertain the identity of the of the entity, despite it not speaking a word. That of the deceased Clara Ross, grotesquely remanifested into not a spectre, not a ghoul. But something even less substantial and pitiful, so. The air screamed with her venom, and, and I felt it with every bone in my body. The glowing, two glowing points of light, which I now took to be the eyes of the sad woman, stood in front of us with an expression of fearsome melancholy. Somehow I found the strength to roll up my sleeves and bear the marks imprinted on, upon my skin. Some of sight come to my mind and I covered all of my fac faculties to begin the incantation that would bound the summon entity to my will. Now he kasit salam api chatu. Yet the words faltered as if swallowed by the void. Every attempt I made to contain the massive energies released by the entity was met with an equal if not stronger backlash. Soon I would not even have the strength left to maintain the words of self-protection. That, that was surely the only thing between me and the raging torrent those that surrounded us. Through the corners of my eye, I could see Dr. Burton convulsing, blood steamed from the edges of Mrs. Burton's mouth. Then, with a great distance away, the torrent embedded, words arced above the din, a low, clear chunt that peeled away at the air. The eyes of the being that was clear shimmered, then appeared to fade in, in the city. I instantly fell to the floor, gasping for breath, with the marks on my forearms burning white hot into my wounds. In my exhausted, exhausted mental state, I paid little heed to what was about to transpire in front of me, and can only testify to the events that followed afterward, with no great degree of clarity. 
what I can get to know in the safety of the city is that the points of the light did not fade. Instead, they simply turned around. There were flashes of light and fragments of freaks. Got hints of high in the Kirian Hebrew and church button. They were so quickly and so fast that I could not recall the exact contents even now. There was e there was the firecracker sound of several walls just shutting, and it was as the walls exploded into a series of rapid shifting sigils, silhouetted against the chaos. I discerned the shape of a tall, thin man, flanked on his left and right by two smaller figures. Then the figures flickered, and the man screamed, and all was silent. I know not how I carried the Vikings out through the back door and into the relative san sanity of the entrance hall. The housekeeper asked no questions, he seemed to intuit what had occurred with within the in walls of the house, and took to seeing that the wall well being of the unconscious Martins, the remainder of the events of that night had has already been well documented. So I shall be brief. After attending to us, the housekeeper was instructed Instructed to ride to Hayfield and contact the Royal Foundation via telegram as soon as possible. I myself managed to return to my room, wherein I collapsed on my bed, and remained so until the arrival of the secondary investigating team the next day. But the individual fate of Henry Percival Ross, not much is known. What, what conclusions remain can only be arrived through the conjecture and not through objective testimony. The secondary investigating teeth team found no trace of the man, but discovered instead a number of anomalous phenomena, phenomena that have already been accounted for and documented in the archives of the Royal Foundation. They paint a picture of Ross before his death as a mentally unhinged and obsessively deranged individual driven by the death of his wife to commit monstrous acts. However, I However, as I have been led to believe that the facts are present, it was also Ross who defended us from the onslaught of his tragic reaction, and who sacrificed his life in return for our sanity. A man cannot be defined by his darkest moments, nor can he be defined by his power that by in his, in his prowess. I somehow comfort, cannot forget the entity in the house, or her lighted eyes that wet fire. Even now, three months after the events of that faithful night, I dream of all when I sleep and wake up surprised that I, that I am even able to remain myself at all. Clara Ross may be dead, but she refuses to be forgotten. Signed, Nintendo Jairus Hanka. Exorcist for the Royal Foundation of the Secure Containment of the Paranormal, December 31st, 1876. And that was the longest time I've ever had to use that voice for it. That was, I would admit you, that was a good voice to use for it, but that was so goddamn boring. It felt like a British person reading it, which I feel like was the point, but it felt like a British person reading it. <laughs> I'm not sure how else to say it. I mean, it's fitting, but also there's something about British people where... They can either sound like the most interesting boring, and I don't know why. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna call them P for the next person, because I don't know how the fuck to say that. You know what? Why don't we just look up their name? I would rather look up their name instead of just call them P. Because you know how P sounds, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, and that's the last bit of the article, dash three. Oh, wait. No, there's dash four. Never mind. In additional notes. I'm wrong. How to pronounce name? Come on, come on.
pronounce as A-A-A-A-D-A-B-R-A-S-H-A-G-N. What the fuck? This doesn't feel like it. I'm sorry, these directions on how to upset me. I could just nickname it Priya at the very beginning. This this was the direction that gave. Thank you, Google, for helping me find something that doesn't help at all. I think I'll just say Priya. I mean, I'm not going to say it. I'm only going to say their name once. Oh, Priya Darshini. All right. Addendum 2696-03. Interviews with, with Dash 1 contaminated personnel. Begin log. Dr. Sanchez. Divina, how are you feeling? Priya Darshini? Yeah, Priya Darshini. Like hell. Whatever they gave me, it isn't working. Can you elaborate? It's kind of like a pounding at the base of my skull and at the front too. It won't light up. When I try to focus on the pain, I feel like I'm... I'm focusing down on a telescope, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. What about hallucinations? Are they gone yet? No, they're not all gone. Just residual visions, mostly. Like, right before you came in, I closed my eyes and I swear I was back in that house again. Like, it was plastered on the back of my eyes, except the lights were all on and everything looked well broken. Like looking into smashed glass. It's the same for the others, isn't it? I heard, or at least I think I heard. Maybe it was something else. I see. Interviewer pauses. Did anything else happen? I think I think I saw it too. A dash one where Clara, whatever you want to call her, she was just about there. Such a vaguely gestures to her to their 11 o'clock with their left hand. Just two arms length away. She had this dress on and, and, and those small jeweled slippers. I knew they were jeweled because I looked down and I saw them on my feet and one of the broken shards. And she turned and gave me this, this smile. Like that was all she had to give. It caught it caught in the cracks and I saw it reflected over and over again in my eyes. She was so gentle. What happened after that? I don't know. I stepped back. I stepped back here again, and that's when you came in. And that's when I realized I wasn't dreaming. I was awake the whole time. I think it took no more than two seconds. Sorry, I can't remember more than that, Doc. I understand. It's not just you. The others are confused too. As confused at all. Is there anything more that you need? Anything we could do? Yeah, we're good here. Here, just turn off the lights when you leave. It's so bright when I close my eyes. Oh. Oh. End vlog. Interview 2696-1987-0513 slash Carrington dash slim dash 27. I guess that's the year, then the month, then the day. Yeah. Begin live. Specialist Carrington. How it went. Cut to the chase. You're just looking for the soundbite on how mind fucked by the house feels like. How being mind fucked by the house feels like? Apparently. Dr. Lim. Oh. I'd prefer we cut this in, this an in interview. Thank you very much. Right, here we are, sir. So what where do you want me to begin? On the record your team was developed that was deployed after twenty 
696-1 activated and blew the seals off. Two of the rays in the library. There was another burst of a red, and your team went dark. We want to know what happened next. Alright, I remember, I remember. We've made it to the damage arise without any issue. Numbers L03 and L05, if I'm not wrong. George and I held the thing steady from Polly Trust back to the, the runes, and I got L03 up just fine. We'd just begun working on L05 when our cons start to flicker. An alarm starts blaring from outside, and I think to myself, well, shit, that's not good. We've been first responders before, but none of us had really been caught inside the house when it went live, you know. So we packed up our gear and nice and easy, trying not to make any sudden movements and creep our way back to the library entrance. When all of a sudden, my ward just just goes Fsh! and specks out. Then Molly's ward goes. Then George's too. We are carrying cost fives for God's sake. We've seen them before. The heavy, powerful stuff. No joke. So when this happens, that's when you we drop everything out of it. But we are too slow. We saw her dash one moving down the tall stairs. She was moving, not really floating, just moving. Then bam. She was right in front of me. One moment I was staring her into her eyes, the next moment George is pulling me out of my out by my armpits, dragging me down the stairs. That's when I realized the screaming was my own. Then the side effects kicked in. It's like you ever met a psychic, Dr. Lem. It's not pretty. The way it feels that drinking strawberry sh straw butterfly phobiosis. Feeling you get inside your head, sloshing up your insides. No, this is different. Dash one is something else entirely. Tell me about it, Harrington. I am here to listen. It's like a fl It's like a flood. Most profound. And that's how she gets in. That's her slipping into the grooves and crannies of your brain. Getting in between the folds. And you remember, you remember what it's like to be her. Like you've never been anything else. Everything comes at once. The smell of her hair, the touch of her voice on your skin, gently up the cleft of your cheek. It's her. She's the real deal. She's everywhere and anywhere at once in your mind. She doesn't come in one piece. She comes in shards and ashes that don't quite seem to fit together as she does, as she should. I cry, Kindle. She could never have been so, so much more. She's broken. That's what she is. Whatever she did, whatever he did to her, to try to bring her back, that's not her. Bits and pieces suspended in time, bound to a crumbling frame of whatever's beneath that skin. And behind it, she's roaring and bursting and raging, the force of a dying star, spinning out the pieces of herself that don't fit, that can't fit. And for a moment, when you look into her eyes, you are her. And you feel her pain and rage and 10,000 other things that you don't have to, don't have a word for. Because she's got nothing inside to feel in a way that you or I do. Nothing left but the whirlwind that shattered glass and memories. I think I understand. Is there anything more? No. I... I think I'm done here. Subject pauses. I'd like to take the meds now, if you please. End log. Addendum 2696-04. Incident log of activation event. June 12th, 1990. Begin log. At 06, thunderstorms begin to form in the Dark Peak region. At 1252. It's... SCP-2696 begins to exhibit increased aspect radiation levels with local readings outside 2696 registering a peak of 0.87 kilocaspers. All personnel are evacuated from within 2696. 30-20 Lightning strikes 2696 in several places in quick succession. Surge protection fails in 55% of the electro- Thematic arrays in 2696 are damaged beyond repair. 
The remaining arrays soon become overloaded and fail in the res resultant cascade effect. Almost immediately, aspect radiation levels within 2696 spike above few keto caspers. Backup electrothematic arrays are powered on, and MTF Theta 77 is scrambled. Dash 1 is noted to change form into a swirling, floating mass of tattered white lace emitting a loud screeching sound at 30.511. Backup electrothematic arrays do not appear to have any effect in containing Dash 1. Dash 1 reaches peak aspect radiation levels of 5.1 kilo caspers. Personnel S outside 2696 began to complain of headaches and nausea. 40.45. Theta-77 arrives and establishes an inner and outer cordon around 2696. Emergency rituals performed by specialists M. Cooper and J. Semos succeeded in repelling Dash-1 away from the front door of 2696 and back towards the second store. However, Dash-1 managed to mentally incapacitate three members of Theta-7. Specialist C. Carrington, Dr. M. Lim, and technician J. Vasquez. 42.54 A strong wind blows through the hallways of, S of 26.96. The front door is slammed shut and is unable to be opened from the outside. Specialist Coopers and Simos are unable to continue the containment rituals and retreat with the remainder of the inner cordon team. Aspect radiation levels around 26.96 continue to intensify to a record high of 7.5 kilocaspers beyond the threshold of protection offered by any foundation protection warts. Throughout all of this, Dash 1 remains at the staircase to the second story. Its swirling and screeching intensifies at 4300. Internal monitors detect that the door to the nursery has opened. 4306. Internal waters detect that both instances of Dash 2 have fled the nursery, accompanied by a large burst of aspect radiation and electromagnetic radiation in, in the gamma spectrum. Minor seismic tremors are detected within 2696, likely as a result of said aspect discar discharge. 4430. Both instances of Dash 2 approach Dash 1 with outstretched arms. Upon contact with Dash 2, Dash 1 abruptly shrinks, shifting back to its humanoid form. 4449. Local aspect radiation levels are observed to sharply drop. The two instances of Dash 2 lead Dash 1 by the hand into the library and up the stairs into the tower. 4523. Dash 1 turns around to embrace the two instances of Dash 2, it kisses each of them on the symbols up on their foreheads, then passes through the tower door and disappears. 4602, both instances of Dash 2 hold hands and descend the tower steps. They exit through the second floor and return to the nursery. At this point, aspect radiation levels within 2696 have returned to baseline. 4637, the door to the nursery gently closes. Above 2696, the thunderstorm dissipates. Theta 77 is ordered to stand down. End log. Additional notes Dash 1 activity, activity was greatly reduced in the months following this incident. It is unknown as to why the search protectors failed, as well as, as to how Dash 2 was able to leave the nursery and pacify Dash 1. Subsequent investigations revealed that the interior structure of 2696 was significantly damaged by the large burst of aspect radiation caused by the emergence of Dash 2 from the nursery. While some of the damage is repairable, several structures utilize fragile and or currently unattainable materials that were unable to be replaced in full. It appears that while Dash 2 serves as a last resort failsafe mechanism for 2696, repeated activations will have the negative effect of permanently re reducing the containment effectiveness of, of 2696, resulting in more frequent and violent breach attempts. Given, concur given current containment practices and rates of failure of AAFM units, it is established estimated that Dash 1 will have a 45% chance of fully breaching containment by 2030. Accordingly, members of 
the ECRG assigned to 2696 are to focus on devising more sustainable and permanent long term containment solutions for Dash 1. And that's it. Holy shit. I don't think their kids live to adulthood. Yeah. So, okay, before we get to the video. Uh, I can already tell you this is clickbaity. That's, that's not how she looks. Did they make her look hotter and more modern? Yeah. That's not how women dressed back then. As well as there's missing flesh. That random blonde guy? Yeah. So four. Yeah. All right, let's get on to the video. Let's see, yep, they included a license. I honestly think, um, before we watch this video, I want to say, I think when the carnations show up, that's a sign of one of the things she held most important to her. I think, although the husband did his best to bring her back, probably was a mistake. Yeah. What he brought, brought back was an angry ghost that wanted their kid. Mm-hmm. Anyways, you ready? Yeah. Klaus raised his head to look towards the building. The energy levels from the building had been climbing throughout the night. Something was coming, right. and it wasn't good. Isn't the building white? Uh, I think there actually is a picture of the building. Actually, it doesn't even look like the building. It's right there. Yeah. It either looked white or a general cream color, right? Yes, we Something doing like this. that. It's a black and white picture, but you can tell it's a light color. Yeah. Okay. Not the same color, not the same shape. Okay, let's keep going. Let's MTF go Theta 77 add. on yeah. routes. Should be here within the hour. I don't think we have an hour. This thing is ready to pop. Really Let me get in there. Place. I can sort this out. They changed the lake to a fountain. Yep. A, a fountain of blood. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> don't be an idiot. The say, radiation. As someone who grew up in a haunted house. I loved reading, not reading, but I loved reading along with you the article. And typically, things about ghosts really piss me off, but I liked that. Yeah. This pisses me off. <laughs> Levels are off the charts. Let's talk with Pythia. She might have something for us. They approached the back of the large truck, they swung the doors open. God damn it! Pythia, we need your help. That's a third character that I'm guessing they're going to use a lot. But they're not, they're not a connected to the goddamn anomaly, but they're a different anomaly. This place is Who's oozing Pythia? paranormal energy. We've got a reading Wait, of 2.0 kilo Caspers. Wait, they said a Pythia? Yeah, they said Pythia. Oh my god. Jerry, this is even worse. What, what SCP is it? What is it? Uh, oh wait. They mispronounced it. They, they said Pythias. Pythia. They said Pythia, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's supposed to be Pythia's wing, which is like... It doesn't have a number. But at oh. least it is, like, story thing that Raman sent me. Wait, what? 
Yeah, uh, Hatch's friend Robin. Oh, oh, it's a goddess, isn't it? That's not what I wanted. God damn it! Discord. There we go. Are they using a goddess and treating it like an? I don't know. Let's just find out what they do with do with it this oh, time. Oh, Sophia's wings. Oh. Let's keep going. But know this. I will not intervene with this otherworldly creature. Typical. That's not what I'm asking. We don't know what we're dealing with here. Whatever is in there is angry. MTF, who you gonna call, is still an hour out. Tell me something. Tell me anything. As you wish. Step forth and close your eyes. Let me now show you what happened here, 200 years ago. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-2696, the haunted Victorian symbol? mansion of Dark Peak. Well, apparently, Don't... actually, I know this is more of a Christian-like symbol. I forgot what it means, though. Like, the eye in the triangle is like a Christian symbol, but I forgot what it was. It doesn't matter. They yeah. pissed me off. Yeah. I mean... I hate do when people do this when it comes to ghost things. They add all this bullshit. Yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Dark Peak Manor, as it came to be known, had been built by the late Henry Percival Rosseth in 1869. Right from the outset, the Victorian mansion had been unique. Henry had been a student of the occult and mysticism from the Orient. Though the initial house design and construction had been relatively typical, it all took a dark turn in January of 1873 with the death of his wife, Clara. It wasn't long after that that his two young children perished as well. Henry immersed himself into his occult work, centering on the victory. I just like that he was he is not appropriately dressed for the times. Ah. That's it. Everything else mansion. is wrong, but I just wanted to add that. Also, it looks like they're mainly using Irish people. <laughs> that's like when the cartoons, that's mainly what they dress Irish people in as, as a joke. Are, are they saying that he's a British guy with a bunch of Irish servants? Yes. Uh, well, we're both part Irish. What, what do you say of this? As I said, servants. Mm. Revolution. Well, the content farm stopped doing SCP stuff, so you can't stab them. Yet. Fair enough, I don't blame you. <laughs> Anyways. Teams of men work day and night to make odd adjustments to the house. Exotic and strange materials were imported to the house. Features such as winding staircases to nowhere, floors which reached the ceilings, and other oddities were added. Henry insisted on overseeing all the work himself, often becoming enraged and short with the workers until eventually they all left. His temper and strange visions were the reasons the workers gave. Henry could be found working day and night from a room with a black door. Flashing lights, auras, smoke and strange sounds were found emanating from behind that door. Towards the end, only Henry and one servant remained in the house. In his grief, wait, wait, wait. Henry had turned to the- Yeah, it was, a, it was a woman. Yeah, it was a woman. Also, all his servants suddenly transformed into one angry man. Yeah. The occult world that had fascinated him for so long. The mind made body was of particular interest. It spoke of the power of turning thoughts, no memories, into reality. In his desperation, he turned to mysticism for an answer and a way to bring his lost family back to him. Jatinder Jaishankar, Dr. Amos Byrne, and his wife, Aurelia Delacroix. Oh shit, they actually went to the story. The large tiger shaped knocker 
it sent a resounding thud through the mansion. All three were eminent occultists and exorcists, here to investigate under the thinly veiled excuse of checking up on Henry. The reports had been coming in for some while. Odd sights, wait, sounds, wait, wait, wait. and even feelings of pain. Why were they all dressed historically accurate, but the main guy wasn't? I don't know. All the SCPs and all the things they got historically accurate, they did it right one time. That yep. shows they, they know how to do it. They know how to do it. <laughs> they know how to do it. Let's keep going, Jerry, before you lose your mind. I'm sorry. Paranoia and nausea when near the house. When Henry <gasps> came to greet them, he was a mere shell of his former self. He was skeletal and haggard. His body looked as if he'd aged decades in mere months. His eyes shone of insanity, but tempered with intelligence, the most dangerous kind. As the night wore on, it became clear that Henry knew why they were here, despite their excuses to the contrary. Oh my gosh, Sanji. However, he didn't seem bothered by it, though he disclosed nothing to them. His mannerism expressed something else. Why was his hair singed down? I don't know. Okay, keep going. What was it? Pride? They couldn't be sure, but there was more going on here than the old man was revealing. As the night wore on and the guests retired to their rooms, they had agreed to meet later in the night to inspect the black door while Henry was asleep. 2.30 a.m. Oh. on the dot, Jatinder heard a quiet knock on his door. Awaiting the nightmare's gone. Mm -hmm. There was a nightmare. I know. him in the doorway was Amos and Aurelia. They signaled to follow them. They approached the black door, but to their surprise, it was unlocked. They pushed it open, revealing a long, oddly shaped corridor. As they walked what? through the hall, they came upon a most bizarre room. The floors were uneven, windows built at a slant, staircases going nowhere. They found the real staircase leading no. up to the second flight and made their way to it. As they walked down the corridor, what? Jatinder was struck with a so sudden good. feeling. Yeah, why is there a Muppet? So good. Why is there a picture of a Muppet? Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm so angry simply because I thought this was one of the videos you were talking about where good for the most part. No. Nope. I thought these were the... Apparently not. I thought, you know, sure, they made things look spookier and nothing really looked accurate, but it sounded like Me. <laughs> of nausea. The dousing rods held by the two others exploded suddenly as they all fell to their knees. Jatinder felt a sudden coldness come over him, a coldness that was tempered with fire and anger. As he looked up, he saw the apparition gliding towards him. What? It was partially transparent, what? and though it didn't float, it also didn't walk. Its eyes glowed with an intense hatred, but also confusion. Did it understand what it was? Jatinder rolled up his sleeves, presenting the archaic rites and rituals emblazoned into his skin. It was now the only thing protecting them what? from this malicious what? spirit. It bore down upon him. He also he spoke in incantation. She suddenly stopped and turned her eyes on something behind her. He heard a voice call out, Clara, and in a heartbeat, she was upon the man. He screamed, and suddenly, as quickly as it had all started, she and the man were gone. Jatinder knew now that it had been Henry who had sacrificed himself to save them from the spirit he had manifested of his dead wife, Clara. This is not what happened. For no, it wasn't. Out loud, well, we're done for. The one thing that could control her, well, he died 200 years ago. Poor Jen. I'm you sure Apollo will find spirit. I didn't think they would manage to slide some racism in there, but you know what? Here we are. <laughs> the Indian man is the guy who was the most spiritually intelligent, of course, yeah? Sure, yeah. Space for even the afterlife. Hmm. 
Do you prefer foot washer or nose hair trim? Oh, you got jokes now. You think this through? If I die, I'll be back, haunting you. Got it? Love is stronger than hatred. You love me now? No, you fool! She's talking about the mansion. Thank you, Pythia. Chen, let's go. As they came back to the house, Theta 77 had already They dressed them like fucking Ghostbusters. Also, why is that one staring at the front like a corpse? I don't know. Wait a minute. Only one of them is dressed like the Ghostbusters, and it's the black guy. The only one dressed like a Ghostbuster. Yeah, that's the black guy. Oh, okay. Important. Sir, we're at 7.5 kilo Caspers. We're off the charts here. Unknown territory. I don't oh, think we can hold her. Like She's to going to break into. Before we go further, they added pities for the ghost. Yeah, yeah. Entertainment. She stood in the open doorway, her aura and radiation increasing. Miles, Edgar. We need you now. I know you can hear me. I know you don't want anyone else hurt. Please. From behind Clara, two small spectral entities emerged. As they each grabbed one of her hands, her eyes quieted and the aura surrounding her faded. They led her back up the stairs as the front door silently closed behind them. What? SCP-2696 is a mansion located in the region of Dark Peak in Derbyshire, England. The interior of SCP-2696 typically induces mild claustrophobia and panic in individuals within one hour of entry. Prolonged exposure leads to an intensification of such feelings, resulting in severe, crippling paranoia within three to six hours. Additionally, the nursery and the tower of SCP-2696 are subject to an anomalous effect which prevents all matter from entering or exiting the boundaries of either area. This effect does not extend to electromagnetic oh or aspect radiation. SCP-2696-1 is a translucent, intangible humanoid apparition physically resembling the late Clara Rossif, though it has been known to assume various non-humanoid forms during oh periods of God, high activity. Previous incarnations have included multiple younger versions of Clara Rossif, <laughs> an animated mass of decaying plumeria her blossoms. Accurately. And then they showed her next to the ghost, which is inaccurate, like it's the same person. Yeah. And a motile column of bone and biological tissue. SCP-2696-1 primarily remains inside the tower of SCP-2696 when inactive, but will attempt to escape from the boundaries of SCP-2696 if its containment is not strictly enforced. SCP-2696-2A and 2B designates the skeletal remains of Miles and Edgar Rosseth, respectively, located inside the nursery of SCP-2696. Due to the inaccessibility of the nursery, the two instances of SCP-2696-2 have only been documented via etheric resonance imaging and X-ray imaging of the nursery interior. SCP-2696-2A and 2B are normally inert, with the two entities lying in a fetal They're position skeletons. at the center of the room. The two entities only animate during periods of high SCP-2696-1 activity. During such periods, 2A and 2B have been observed to alternate between wrestling each other, skeleton? dancing in circles, and standing yep. motionless at the door to the nursery. Enhanced imaging of the two entities reveals the presence of a carved symbol on the forehead of each of the instance's skulls. Notes recovered from the study suggest a relation between the symbol and various experiments conducted by Henry Percival Rossif. In particular, those concerning the manifestation and manipulation of thought-based constructs. SCP-2696 was formerly known as Rossith Hall, built in 1869 by the eccentric industrialist and occultist Henry Percival Rossith. It comprises of two stories and an elevated tower constructed in a traditional neo-Gothic architectural style. Its interior, however, Features numerous unorthodox design elements, such as sloped floors, I mean, dead end hallways, right, not... protruding surfaces, and uneven, uh -huh. twisting corner angles. 
SCP-2696-1 activity was greatly reduced in the months following this what incident. What is this? It is unknown as Ow. to why the surge protectors failed, as well as to how SCP-2696-2 was able to leave the nursery and pacify SCP-2696-1. Subsequent investigations revealed that the interior structure of SCP-2696 was significantly damaged by the large bursts of aspect radiation caused by the emergence of SCP-2696-2 from the nursery. While some of the damage was repairable, several structures utilized fragile and or currently unobtainable materials that were unable to be replaced oh in full. It appears that while SCP-2696-2 serves as a last resort failsafe mechanism for SCP-2696, repeated activations will have the negative effect of permanently reducing the containment effectiveness of SCP-2696, resulting in more frequent and violent breach attempts. Given current containment practices and rates of failure of AAFM units, it is estimated that SCP-2696-1 will have a 47% chance of fully breaching containment by 2030. Accordingly, members of the ECRG assigned to SCP-2696 are to focus on devising more sustainable and permanent long-term containment solutions for SCP-2696-1. Love unending, though a beautiful concept, can sometimes lead us down a path of desperation and despair. Love deeply. But once that love is gone, let it be. As That's always, have know. a care and remember yeah. to subscribe, like, and share if you would. Unt as well as they left out a whole bunch of characters, like the interview logs. None of them were there. Just toss oh, aside. Man. Yeah. All right. Removal of characters in license. For. Bl uh, added gore or violence? One or two? Which would you say? Probably two, because it is more violent than the other one. Yeah, it is more violent, just not that violent. Yeah, two. Yeah. Deviates from the plot the article. Four. <laughs> Only men in the video. To multiple women, but they couldn't remove all the. Women. Also, they horrified the ghost. Yeah, they also got rid of the uh the the maid. Yeah, that's a three. <laughs> See, it's rating. Fifteen percent. Okay. All right. 